Hello Ben here and in this video I'm going to be attempting to fit this tiny little HF modification board into the Quancheng UV5R Plus using the SMD or surface mounted device solder station with a hot air gun and uh, just some very basic tools. So stick around and we'll see how successful this is. So you may well have seen Paul, Oscar Mike Zero, Echo Tango's video on the installation of this using a soldering iron and uh, I have to say it does an incredibly uh, good job. This is absolutely tiny, I didn't realise until you get it out of the packet how small the parts really are. Um, but uh, I'm going to be using a, um, an SMD workstation with a uh, hot air uh, blower as well as the fine tipped soldering iron. Uh, hopefully that'll make things a little bit easier uh, or not, but like I say, this isn't going to be a um, a tuitional video. This is really just a documentation of um, of my experience of fitting it and what works for me, what doesn't, and uh, any problems we find along the way. So the first thing I need to do then before we attempt to fit the board into this Quancheng UV5R Plus is remove the battery. So we're going to press at the bottom there and uh, remove the battery. We'll remove the antenna and then we'll remove the um, hot volume on off knob and then we need to remove this little um, ring just on side, inside the uh, antenna housing there. Um, I've already taken this off once so it's nice and loose but you may well find the first time you try and take it off, they're really stiff. Um, I did have a bit of an issue getting it off the first time, but uh, with a bit of perseverance and just gently pushing with a screwdriver, um, that did come undone, but now I've done it once, it seems to, to have loosened up, so you may well encounter the same same issue. You may not, if you're giving it a go yourself. So uh, we'll uh, remove that. And um, usually in here there's like a plastic rim, a black plastic rim, but the first time I took that apart the uh, the rim had all sort of fallen apart. So maybe it had just been over tightened in the factory, but um, yeah that was the, uh, the first problem I encountered when I took this off, took this apart the first time was, uh, um, like I say, the, the, the plastic sort of degraded a bit, but uh, it doesn't seem to affect it at all. Um, next thing we need to do is to very carefully remove the um, the radio casing from the from the outer shell. So I've got a little um, prying tool here, just a small kind of pry bar, uh, and very gently, uh, because obviously we've got to be wary of the screen and the speaker is going to be attached inside as well. So I'm just going to try and gently um, pry the uh, radio out of the casing. Maybe start at the back. There we go. So we'll start at the back first, and you can see there's a little. Um, notch there which has appeared um, and then we'll try and pop the front out as well so we've got the back clear and then we just need to pop this end out Right, so we've already come across our first problem. I've already managed to kill this uh, UV5R Plus uh, in uh, extricating the screen. That must have caught near the LED and the, uh, the tiny ribbon cable there is broken and the screen's fallen apart. I say I have already taken this one apart before and um, that was a bit of an issue, this one. Um, what we need to do is remove the screen and flip it over, but this one is loose anyway. Uh, if you look there, I haven't even come across those broken bits of plastic, so um, that would appear the plastic had already broken in there, perhaps before it had been manufactured, and that, that should be fitted, fitted in there, but this one was loose, and it's obviously lifted, got caught on something, and I say it's ripped that little uh, ribbon cable, so uh, so this one's dead now, um, maybe we'll use that for the uh, Quan Sheng dock, dock, perhaps that would work without the screen, so we'll, uh, we won't throw it away just yet, but um, 
we'll, uh, we'll, we'll chuck it in a box and that can be a, uh, uh, a spares and repairs jobby. But fortunately uh, I have got another brand new one just out of the box. <laughs> I didn't really want to use this for this but um, so it was another another one I've just got out of the box. did have that same issue getting the, uh, the thread off but um, the, uh, the plastic stayed intact this time. But uh, let's flip that one over and uh, the screen is attached on this one so I think that was perhaps the other one was a slight issue with the uh, with the manufacturing um, you'll notice the uh, the speakers attached there and uh, just down here uh, let me take that bit out carefully uh, just past the uh, speaker mic socket there's a, a small piece of plastic that needs to come out as well so we just need to move that out of the way so using a very fine tipped soldering iron, so that's the, uh, the smallest tip I've got on this iron here, uh, I'm just going to remove the uh, wires to the speaker. And then we can gently remove the uh, the screen. Being careful not to break this wire again. We don't want to break the uh, the ribbon cable. So you just need to squeeze gently there. I understand. And then the other side is hidden away, so it's going to be a bit tricky. We don't want to damage the circuit board, but we're going to just gently try and. Uh, remove this uh, away you can see how fragile that uh, that ribbon cable is there just a gentle wiggle we can uh, get that so that will carefully uh, move out of the way there you go and you can see how uh, how small that cable is there. So now that I've moved the screen out of the way, the next thing I need to do is remove this little resistor just here. I say it is absolutely tiny. Uh, so I'm going to do that with the hot air soldering iron. So we're just going to get that going. I've got that set to uh, about 420 degrees, I think. Uh, we'll see when it heats up what I've got it set to. Uh, I'm going to hold it about 10 centimeters away from the uh, from the radio, so it's just out of shot at the moment. There you go, you can just see the tip. So I'm just warming that circuit board. Um, yeah, we're on 450 degrees Celsius coming out of the uh, um, out of the hot air blow at the moment. I'm just going to get a little bit closer. Hopefully, you can see that my arm's not in the way. Um, it's still awkward to do it with the camera and with the uh, and actually trying to work it out at the same time. So I'm holding it vertically straight down. And like I say, hopefully you can see that with uh, with my arm being in the way, without my arm being in the way rather. Uh, we'll just get it warm enough that we can uh, lift it straight off the PCB hopefully. I've not got too much air blowing out of that, just a gentle flow. So it doesn't want to lift, so we'll try it with a soldering iron with that fine tip again. I'm going to try touching it just on the edge.
that is being incredibly stubborn and not wanting to lift off there. So let's try it again with the uh, with the soldering iron. Okay, so after a lot of faffing around and trying with the hot air gun and the soldering iron, I have finally managed to re remove that first little resistor there. Uh, we'll give that a clean up with some uh, with some alcohol and a cotton bud. But yeah, that was not an easy task. That's taken forever to uh, um, to remove. Just mindful I didn't want to get the circuit board too hot or damage the uh, the plastic screen with the heat and uh, any components around it so I think we've managed to do it but um, let's say it wasn't uh, was not an easy task so apparently you also need to move remove this tiny screw here as well to allow the uh, replacement resistor uh, just to fit fit in there so we're going to remove that all together take that out and then uh, the new resistor is going to fit between uh, this lump of solder here and the earth apparently so we'll bend that round to make that uh, nice and neat yes yeah, so it's going to sit somewhere there I believe so um, we'll snip that off about there And then uh, we'll do the same this side. So it's gonna it's gonna end up just on that little solder joint there. So if we cut it about here somewhere, it should fit in there neatly. So what I think I'll do, even though the uh, hot air solder iron is uh, cooled down again, we'll quickly put that back on. I'm just going to warm up a little bit of flux. This might not be the best way of doing it but uh, that's the way I do it. Warm a little bit of flux up and then uh, we're going to apply just a teeny bit to uh, to that point there. We can clean this off afterwards and then the same again where the uh, resistor is going to end up and then with the uh, we'll try it with a solder iron this time and uh, let's see if we can fit this little resistor without dropping it let's see if I can do it with my fingers there we go Yeah, that's one end on. Let's see if we can bring it this way a little. I'm trying to do it so you can still see as well, which is making it slightly more awkward. There we go. I might just apply a tiny little bit more solder on there. We'll uh, see if we can solder it on here as well. Again, I need a tiny tool just to hold that, hold that still. Put a tiny bit more solder on there. Maybe a little bit more flux because I think I've burnt that all away.
not really happy with that yet just yet we'll give that a clean up and maybe uh, try it with a hot air gun So that is soldered on, we just need a little bit more cleaning up to get some of that flux off there. So the next task then is to try and remove and replace this tiny, tiny little capacitor just there. So we're definitely going to use the hot air uh, soldering iron for that one. So as soon as I pick that up that cuts in and uh, again I'm going to try and do this so that you can see what I'm doing. Just gently warming it and that's how obviously others are going to get warm around it as well but just uh, watching it. it's absolutely tiny it looks fairly warm already so I'm just going to see if I can pick that off really gently not quite I cannot stress how tiny this is There you go, so it's off. And uh, we'll give it a tiny clean up. I don't want to knock anything around it though, so um, we'll give it a tiny, tiny bit of uh, solder paste, I think. So I've got some uh, solder paste in a tube and uh, with a very fine. Um, needle on the end so I'm just going to put a tiniest amount of solder paste on there let's get a tiny bubble out okay let's wipe some of that off actually too much that's far too much <laughs> but let's uh, let's clean some of that off So it's left a tiny bit of solder paste on there. Let's give that a clean up. Probably got that too hot too quick. Let's give that another little clean. So what I need to now do is get one of these out of the packet. Those it came with four. We only need one, but there's four tiny little replacement. Uh, Tiny little replacement uh, capacitors in there. Um, so there they are. There's the uh, the replacement capacitors, uh, which is going to go in that little spot there. So let's try and carefully get one of these out. How do they even come out of there? They taped in, looks like there's a little bit of tape or something over the top. So ext extricating the little uh, capacitor, I've got it there, it's tiny, you probably can't even see it, uh, was a task that's in itself. So I'm going to leave it there and I'm going to place it there once I've gently heated this up. I'm going to drop the... Uh, drop the... Uh, Airflow quite considerably on the uh, on the hot air soldering iron. So that's still set to about 450. Let's drop it down a little bit because I don't think we'll need it that high. Let's drop it to about 420. Okay, 
Okay, so I've dropped the hot air flow to about 420 degrees. Um, I've blown it away already. <laughs> Where's it gone? There it is. Still there. So um, I'm being careful not to, not being careful, but try not to melt the uh, the screen as well. So let's heat that up. And I know you can't see that, but I want to try and uh, keep the components still while we do it. My God, this is absolutely tiny and fiddly. <laughs> I can barely see it. I can't even see which way round it is. Yeah, if you've not got great eyesight, this is a very fiddly task. And I've lost it again. <laughs> there it is. Plus trying to do this with a camera right where I need to be is a bit of a hindrance. Where is it? There it is. I've got the tiniest tweezers and even they are struggling to to pick it up. And it's now orientating it the right way is going to be the problem as well. Right, he's there. How anyone could do this with a solder iron is absolutely beyond me. I can't even do it with a... With that. Right, let's do this really gently. I'm going to drop that airflow right down now. So as low as it will possibly go. Let's see what happens. No, I've blown it away again. <laughs> I wonder, do I try this with the solder iron? Let's see what happens. Let's see if we can get it hot. This is impossible. As soon as it gets near it, it blows it away. See if I've got some even finer tweezers. Right, I don't know if you can see that, but I've put the tiniest dob of solder paste on just on one side that I can in the hope that this won't blow away when we heat it. So 
It's moving. Oh. Uh, worried I might have shorted this out. Well, it's stuck, but is it stuck in the right place? It doesn't look like it. Now it's the wrong side. Hmm. We need to spin it around 180 degrees if we can, or at least just shove it over. Oh, I think we're in. Right, let's leave that for a second. We'll give it a clean up with some more uh, alcohol. Right, so now that we've done that, next task is to remove uh, these two tiny components just there and there, and this uh, chip needs to come off as well. So again, we're going back to the uh, the hot air. I'm uh, holding it about 10 centimeters above, uh, probably just out of shot. You can see the shadow. Um, I'm just going to start warming them up. We'll start bringing it in. I've got the airflow really, really low. Um, and then we'll just start working these uh, these pins here. Let's see if we can remove these. We're up to 420 degrees. Might need to just turn the heat up slightly. So I'll turn the heat up a little bit. About 440 now. See that starting to melt. I think we can get that one off. Not quite. So let's go up to 450 then. I'll increase the airflow very, very slightly. I daren't put it up too much. What we need to be careful of is there's a little plastic film on here. I don't want to mess the buttons up. Uh, so let's try it with the, uh, the soldering iron. I think that might be a little bit better.
so I finally managed to get them off. That has taken absolutely forever just to remove those two components. So let's try and remove this uh, chip. I've just put a little bit of flux on there and I hope that will uh, help uh, free it off a little bit. I think we're going to have to use the solder iron again. I don't like using the solder iron on this, but uh, unfortunately it looks like it might be the only way. So that's the chip gone. I'm a little bit concerned. I might have lost a component just there. It looks like there ought to be something there. I didn't notice me knocking anything off. I might have to look back on the video, but uh, it could just be a gap. But it looks like there could be another tiny little component just missing there. So I don't know if I've knocked anything. I wouldn't even know because uh, so they're so tiny it's difficult to uh, to see if we've lost something off there. Um, but uh, we'll see how this goes. Well, I'll give this a real good clean up because uh, I don't want any sticky buttons or anything like that. They all seem to work still. Like I say, there is, you probably can't see it, but there is like a plastic film over the top of this. So I'm just very aware when I was using the soldering iron or the uh, hot air gun close to it, it would, uh, um, it's would it got potential for melting. So uh, we've had to be really careful or as careful as I possibly can. I don't, I don't think there is a component missing there. Um, it um, appears that is as it should be. So we've given that a clean up um, and then it's uh, probably time to try and fit this board and this is also incredibly tiny again uh, you see the size of my fingers there uh, that is uh, absolutely tiny that board and uh, I believe that these bits need to just break away um, just to allow it to fit so very carefully just uh, remove that little, little tab. Uh, do we need to take the bottom one off? Probably do. Let's try and do it with some something gently. No, we'll leave it on because I think that's not going to be causing us a problem. But um, let's just uh, line that up, see where that needs to go. So that's needing to go just there. And I think, uh, say, watching Paul's video, how he did it, he stuck that on with some double sided tape. Now, the, the, the kit doesn't come with any, um, so I'll probably do the same. I'll cut myself a little bit of double sided tape. Um, and then I'm just going to try and use solder paste, I think, just to uh, solder those. Uh, looks like there's six pins on there. So there's uh, one here, it misses one, two, three, four, five, six pins just there. Uh, again, difficult to see, you can't see it, but there is actually some very tiny, minute holes uh, through the board itself. So I'm hoping that the solder paste, once we've stuck that on, we can use the solder paste just to uh, to heat that up and let that dribble through. Then we need to make these tiny little jumper wires up. Um, I have no idea how we're going to do that just yet, but uh, <laughs> watch this space. Right, so I've uh, cut and attached a little bit of uh, double-sided tape. There we go, onto the back there. So we can now try and uh, line this up exactly where it needs to be. There, that's good. Yeah, so let's 
um, let's see if we can fix this on. So we need to fix a ground on there. Now shall we try that with a little bit of solder paste? Let's see what happens. Let's pop a little bit of solder paste in there. And we'll uh, see if we've done enough. Let's put it on with the, uh, the hot air gun and set the temperature raise up. I mean, that's working quite nicely. I think we need a little bit more paste than that. But Try again. Seems to be working quite nicely. Let's go a little bit more. Just made itself into a bit of a ball. I think we could probably fix that with a solder iron. Yeah. And to be honest, I think we can put a little bit of flux on there and just a little solder just to, just to tidy that up. Yeah, that probably would have been better if I'd have left that alone, but never mind. We'll try and tidy that up a bit. Let's clean that up again. Gravity is not on our side, let's let that run back.
Right, so let's try attaching those pins now then. So again, I'll just apply a little bit of uh, solder paste to each of them. Oops. And then two. And three. Hopefully that'll find its own way across. And then let's do one side at a time. I don't think that's quite made contact just yet. We'll we'll have another little go, I think. Again, I don't want to overdo it with a solder paste if I can help it. Just doing one at a time. It's difficult to see, but I think that one's worked. We'll have to test them afterwards. Again, I think we might need to, need to adjust that just to let gravity help us a little bit just so it runs down. So that to me looks like they've all made contact now, so we'll give it a good clean up and uh, on to the next bit.
So potentially the last little bits we need to do is put a jumper wire from there to the resistor just there and then uh, from this one as well to somewhere. We'll figure that out in a minute. But I'm going to concentrate on that first so let's try and get a little tiny jumper wire from there to there. Almost don't need the wire. I wonder if we could almost just do it with solder but I think we will need a wire so we'll, uh, we're just going to use a tiny little bit of, uh, I've got some uh, RG58 coax. I'm going to nick a strand off basically so we'll use that and see how we get on. Right, so the last little jumper just needs to go from there to there. So let's try see what we can do with that one. Let's try a little bit of solder paste, I think, uh, on either end. Here it is. Let's put a teeny bit just on there. And a teeny bit on there. I don't really need any on there. Right, so let's try and solder them, shall we? Snip them off. If we can carefully. Let's give that a little clean again. So the one I'm really not sure about is that little uh, jump from there to the resistor. I think it's made it. It's a bit close to this uh, diode or whatever it is, or transistor or something there. But uh, it's pretty difficult to say without a magnifying glass or something we can zoom right in. But uh, anyway, I think that's everything done hardware side. Um, I'll uh, put it back together and then uh, I've had enough today, so we'll uh, we'll test it in the next video. So this has taken me pretty much all morning. So uh, I think I started this about ten o'clock, and it is now uh, oh nearly two o'clock in the afternoon. So I've spent a good few hours uh, messing around with this, a few stops for cups of teas in the, in between. But um, yeah, it's took me all day, just uh, all morning anyway, just uh, just messing around with this. So anyway, um, I hope you've enjoyed it. I say it's not a uh, tutorial by any means. It's just uh, my experience of how it's gone. If you want to see whether it works or not, then uh, stick around, hit the uh, like and subscribe, stick your comments uh, down below, uh, I'm open to constructive criticism, <laughs> I'm sure there'll be plenty, but um, let us know uh, how you've got on as well if you've attempted this at all, and um, say so next video hopefully we'll be uh, testing it out, it might be a complete failure, but uh, you never know, fingers crossed. See you on the next one, 7-3.